uh, initiate and conclude uh, negotiating about the abandoning of the German currency. But only under one condition, that the new single currency uh, and the European Monetary Union will remain and will still will remain loyal and, 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 and uh, uh, inspired by the principles of German monetary policy in the past. That is to say that there will be institutional and normative guarantees for maintaining the new currency as stable as the Deutsche Mark. And if ever the European community, for what reason soever, leaves that path of virtue, then it is not only the right of the German government, but it will become the duty of the German government to leave the European Monetary Union. This is expressly said in that verdict, and it should be remembered here and today. And many, many people, particularly the court itself, today uh, want uh, to talk about that verdict with a certain negligence, but I'm here uh, in the spirit of Lord Denning, whom I very much admired when he had the guts to uh, challenge the British trade unions, uh, becoming the earth usurpers of the United Kingdom and thinking that of the masses of the country, uh, that uh, these rulings will have an impact still today. From time to time, it's uh, not needless to remind a court of its own uh, rulings. <clears throat> As we, um, uh, all of us, to a great or less degree within the group of 50, um, adhere to the principle of European integration and of a European equilibrium, uh, despite a heavy debate on the uh, current policy led by Mr. Barroso and by Mr. Juncker and all these people who speak in the name of Europe without representing anybody, um, we, uh, in, in, in the contrast to other groups, have uh, introduced in our complaint something which will bother the German Constitutional Court. We have um, touched a taboo, because the German Constitutional Court, as all other Constitutional Courts, all other highest instances in the European community, they don't like to submit questions of European law to the instance which is exclusively in charge of ruling these matters the European Court of Justice. They don't do this because nobody likes to give away power. This is human. I am fully comprehensive. But the system is worked out like that. If there is a question of European law, which a law court judges at the last instance, it does not only have the option, but it is obliged to submit this question for a preliminary ruling to the European Court of Justice and it has to be inspired uh, by the ruling of the European Court of Justice. The German Constitution Court has never submitted anything. They feel sovereign to interpret European law. I don't want to comment this because I don't make comments on law courts and law court practices. If ever I have to say something, I say this in writing, in the sober words of a German scholar. Um, uh, but um, um, th th this is a, 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 a unique uh, and very, in my opinion, very subtle indication of what the European, of what the German Constitution Court should do. Clarify the question whether Mr. Trichet's policy is in line with Article 123 of, um, of the treaty. Clarify whether the bilateral or the multilateral agreements between the Eurozone member states on financial assistance uh, to Greece are compatible with Article 123, and submit the question whether the European um, stability, financial stability facility is compatible with the bailout interdiction, and uh, submitting as well <coughs> whether the European Stabilization Fund uh, the instrument which uh, gives uh, the authorization to the Commission to raise funds about uh, uh, 68 billion uh, euros is compatible with uh, Article 122 
um, section 2 of the treaty. There is no other instance to decide on these matters and um, we are very proud uh, to be the only complaint uh, being willing and having the courage and running the risk of submitting and urging the, law, the, the Constitution Court to submit these questions within the procedure of preliminary questions to the European uh, Constitution Court. There is growing critic in Germany on whether or not the European Court of Justice is still on the path of virtue, whether the European Court of Justice is too much inspired by European integration and uh, whether its principle is in dubio pro Europa um, <laughs> uh, and considers itself too much as a motor of integration. I have my uh, personal opinion on that. Uh, there have been many judges. Uh, the European Court of Justice is a pluriverse. We have the unique uh, uh, opportunity and situation that a uh, Greek uh, president will have to prove the independence of the court. And this Greek president, Mr. Sussis, has been a member of my faculty in Bielefeld in the German province when I was a young student in the 70s. And I uh, would like to tell you that I have kept the best momentum of this excellent uh, lawyer. So, as long as courts have not decided, I have full trust in their independence and the, the worst costs of the law court are the costs of losing reputation because all their authority is based on that. So let us play the institution again which is set in uh, the treaty and let us submit these questions to uh, the European uh, Court of Justice and that then the German Constitutional Court um, derive its conclusions, its conclusions from uh, the guidelines of uh, such a decision. Um, as to the practices of um, the scandalous practices of what will sooner or later be called the European Bad Bank, the ECB, purchasing um, uh, rubbish bonds on the markets, distorting um, capital, um, the competition of capital markets, although it's the, the goal, the sacred goal of the European community to ensure everywhere undistorted competition. It's laid down in the principles of the treaty as one of the greatest goals. Uh, it's a sacred cow, not only a sacred cow, it's a real goal. And it has been wiped away by the French in the, uh, in the text of the Primate Treaty, but it is still the protocol. As we know, in the protocol, what is in the protocol has the same validity and, as what is mentioned in the, in the text of the treaty. So how can the European Central Bank um, no longer resist the intellectual confusion, confusion of becoming some sort of fire brigade for failing banking sectors such, island, such as Ireland? How can they purchase bonds uh, as soon as they have been issued by a government? Look at the last uh, issue the government, the Spanish government made in summer. It was uh, underwritten by Banco de Santander and two-thirds of it was transferred to the European Central Bank. And there's not even any transparency on what the European Central Bank uh, does. So those uh, in the, within the European community who have always contested the idea of independence, they um, are fueled uh, by the uh, uh, intransparency and the um, arrogance, the intransparency of the institu institution and the um, arrogance of Mr. Trichet. So it remains to be seen. Uh, but this is a, a very controversial perspective of a man who likes to litigate, who likes not only to bargain, but to litigate whether these scandalous practices should sooner or later be brought to the European Court of Justice. Uh, there is a need to have this control and not to rely on complaints within the Constitution Court of the national jurisdictions and uh, because it's not a minor aspect of the <clears throat> rescuing initiative of our governments, but it is the major element of a policy which has totally failed. <clears throat> well, the last aspect I would like to talk to you about, because um, 
you can never um, exhaust a subject, but you can, of course, uh, far more easily exhaust an audience, um, <laughs> is the power of jurisdiction, the continuous practice of playouts. We are at the verge of an inflating, of course, 